Hi GMSD, I'm Miss Lott and I teach 6th and 7th grade STEM at Riverdale and I'm going to take you through a quick coding lesson. So for this lesson today, we're going to be using Scratch. If you've never used Scratch before, you'll go to the website scratch.mit.edu. Probably a lot of you have used Scratch before, but if you haven't, I'll do a quick walkthrough of it. If you do not already have an account, you will need to create an account. If you're coding on Scratch and you're not logged in, it's not going to save your progress, which would be a huge bummer. So I'm already logged in up here. I've got my username so you can see. We're going to be coding a video game today. So the first thing, before you start creating your own video game, we need to do a practice one so that we know how to do it in the first place. So on the main site, when you click on the Ideas tab, it's going to take you to Tutorials. So you'll click the little light bulb that says Choose a Tutorial. Once there, it has a lot of different tutorials and many different options for things that you can code. Today, we're going to click on the one that says Make a Chase Game. When you click on the tutorial at first, it gives you a video with instructions, and as you click the arrows, it tells you exactly how to do everything. I'm going to X out though just so that I can show you um, a few different things. So it will be really helpful for you to watch that. I'm going to move me out of the way. Down here at the bottom of Scratch, you can choose a backdrop. Okay, your backdrop is going to go right here on this part of the screen. You can actually upload your own photos. So if you go to Google Images and you have something that you really like and want to put on there, you can just save it to your camera roll and then upload it from there. Or you can search backdrops that they already have on Scratch and they have a ton. Same thing for your sprite characters. So it always starts you out with a cat. Um, but we won't be using the cat today, so you can delete that. And then down here, you can choose your own sprite character. So you can either upload one or go and choose one that's been pre-made by Scratch. So those are the first two basic steps you need to do before you actually start coding. We are going to choose the backdrop and sprite characters that the directions from the tutorial tell us to first before we make our own. So. From that tutorial, if you go to that Ideas tab again, there's also cards with written instructions. So it will be helpful for you to watch that video first that was just pulled up when I clicked on the tutorial and go through the instructions. But if you scroll down on the Ideas tab, right here where it says Make a Chase Game, it says Coding Cards. If you click Download PDF, it will pull up the exact instructions on how to do this game, and we're going to follow these step by step. So it won't take super long to get through these. You definitely want to go through it first, though. That way you kind of get some practice in and you know how to code basic characters and how to get certain characters to add points and deduct points and things like that so that then you can make your own game. So I'm going to go down to the first card, and the first thing it wants us to do is create a character that moves left and right with my arrow keys when I tap them. So let's go back to Scratch. Right now it's empty. I don't have anything on here. So I'm going to choose the backdrop that it asks us first, and it had a space backdrop. So I'm actually just going to search that. I'm going to type in space, and it automatically pulls up for me. So I'm going to click on that galaxy background. There it is. It also had a robot for the sprite character. So I'm just going to type in robot. There it is. Now my sprite character is on there. So the first thing the cards asked me to do was to make my character move to the right and the left when I tap my arrow keys. So if you go over here to your events, there is a little coding block that says when spacebar clicked. So I'm going to pull that one over and I'm going to change it to my arrow keys. All of them are listed here. So I'm going to do my right arrow key first so that I can make my robot move to the right when I tap it. Okay, something important to know is that this right here is our x-axis, and this over here is our y-axis. So if I want my character to move to the right, I know that my robot needs to move across the x-axis. So I'm going to go over to my motions block, 
and I'm going to go to the blocks that talk that have the letters X and Y in them so that I know which one I need to use. It's also written on the chase cards. It tells you the exact blocks that you're going to need, okay? And it explains why. It tells you to choose your backdrop, choose your character, and then it gives you the blocks. But I'm going to tell you why it tells you to use these. So when I click change X by 10, because that's what the card tells me to use, what I'm doing is I'm increasing by a positive number. When I increase by that positive number, when I tap my arrow key, there you go, my robot moves to the right. When I tap my left arrow key, nothing happens yet because I haven't coded it. So if I'm gonna move left on the x-axis, I'm gonna need a negative number, which is exactly why the cards on here say to change left arrow by negative 10. So positive number moves me to the right, negative number moves me to the left. So I'm going to do the exact same thing when spacebar press, change that to my left arrow. Now I'm going to change X by negative 10. And you can change any of the numbers on any of your coding blocks. Okay, so now my robot moves to the right and the left when I tap on my arrow keys. Whoops, I didn't change that to left. There we go. Okay, left and right. Now I have to make my robot move up and down. So we'll go back to our chase cards and just read exactly what it tells you to do. So it's going to say, okay, now I need to move up and down. And it tells you the exact coding blocks. It's important that you go through this exact tutorial first because later when you make your own game with your own characters and your own backdrops, it's going to be very helpful to know how to have done this already on a practice game. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. Events, I'm going to go ahead and code all of my arrow keys really quick. I'm going to do up arrow and down arrow. Motions. Now moving up and down, I'm moving on the Y axis now. So I need to make sure that I change Y axis by positive 10 to move up and then a negative 10 to move down. Okay, so now when I use my arrow keys, right, left, up, and down. If when you click the up arrow, it's moving the wrong way, just go back and check your number, make sure you have a positive for up, negative for down, and so on. Okay, so let's look at the next steps. Now it tells us to chase a star. So we need to add another sprite character because so far right now we only have a robot. So we're gonna go and choose that sprite character and then it's gonna tell us to write more code. So down here, I'm going to search star. There it is. Okay, so I have my next sprite character. If you notice down here, on my robot, I have some code written on there right now, but when I go to my star, there's no code. It's because I haven't coded that sprite character to do anything yet. So I'm going to code it exactly what it tells me to do. It says when the flag is clicked, we have a forever loop, you're gonna type a smaller number to make it glide. Okay, so it's telling us we want this star to be gliding across the screen constantly because it's in a forever loop. So this star is gonna be moving around the screen all the time. So let's go do that. When the flag is clicked on my events, I need a control. So I'm gonna add my forever loop just like it asked me, go to my motions, and I'm gonna have it glide around to random positions. This block right here would be gliding to a specific spot because it's giving me a coordinate for my X and my Y axis. This going to a random position, it's just gonna start randomly gliding around the screen. Okay, so notice that it said, if you type a smaller number like 0.5, it's gonna glide faster. Here's why. If I'm gliding around when I click that arrow for one second, it's taking one whole second to get to the random positions. So if I increase my number, like if I type in two, my star is going to start moving slower because now it's going to take two whole seconds to get to that random positions. So I am going to do what it says and I'm going to make my number smaller. I'm going to go to 0.5. That way it starts moving quicker. So now it's going taking half a second to get to all these random positions. So now my star is moving around constantly, which is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Let's go to the next step. Play a sound. You can add a lot of different sounds on Scratch. 
This one is asking us to create a sound for when our robot touches the star. Okay, so it says to select our sprite character. We're on the star right now, so we need to go back to our robot. We'll go to the sounds tab and go choose the collect sound from the library. And then it's going to tell us how to code that for when it touches the star, that sound is going to play. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to switch back over to my robot. I'm going to scroll down so I can start adding more code. Here's my sounds tab. When, if you need to add a new sound, you can go down here and search it. I already had mine pulled up, but there are endless amounts of sounds. So you would just type in collect and it'll pull it. So here's the collect sound. Okay, I'm going to make sure that one is selected. I'm going to go back to my code. Okay, the chase card tells me when flag is clicked. I need a forever loop. And then I have an if-then block. So it's an if-then statement. So if something happens and it's true, something else is going to happen. So let's start with our events. When the flag is clicked, I'm going to do this in my forever loop because I want it to every single time it touches the star, it's going to make that noise. Because if I don't put my forever loop, it's only going to make the noise once when it touches it. I want it to make the noise every single time this robot touches the star, it makes the sound. Okay? It tells us to go to our if-then statement and we're going to use our sensing blocks. So if-then, sensing, if we are touching a certain character. So I'm going to insert this block inside the other one. Okay, I'm going to choose my character. So if touching the star, I'm coding on the robot currently. If I was coding this on a star, then I would say if touching robot. So if we are touching the star, what do we want to happen? We want to play the sound. So I'm going to go to my sounds tab. And this one tells us to use play sound until done. And you need to make sure that you select the correct sound. I'm going to select the collect sound. Now, every time you code anything, test it out. Don't start coding everything first and then test it at the end because if there's a mistake in your code, it's going to be way harder to find if you've already coded everything. So always test it out as soon as you code it. Look at that. So when I move around, okay, it plays every time I touch the star. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. The next step, it wants us to start adding a score. So when our robot touches the star, we want the score to increase for the robot. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create a variable. And I'll show you how to do that. It's on the chase cards. So I'm going to go back over here to my code. Over here we have variables. You get to make your own for this one. I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to label it score. Okay, now I have a variable right here. Make sure it's checked. If you don't have it checked, you won't be able to use it. It's labeled score, and look what popped up on the top corner of my screen. A scoreboard. Perfect. So let's go back to our directions. It's telling us exactly what we need to have. Okay, so it's going to have us add it into a code that we've already written. So it's going to add it into our sound. So you can see it says if touching star play sound. All we got to do is add in our score. So when we first click this flag, okay, this is our start button, we want the score to be set to zero at the beginning of your game. And you have to do that. So we're going to set the score to zero. Make sure you don't leave it at my variable or nothing's going to happen. Change it to score. So set score to zero. Every time I click this flag now, when the game starts over, it will reset to zero. Then it tells us to put that code again. We're going to change the score by one. So this is saying if touching the star, change score by one and play the sound. Make sure you go click on score. So now what's going to happen is when my robot, because I'm on the robot character, touches the star, it's going to increase my score by one and play a collect sound. So let's test it out and make sure I get it correctly. Look at that. Now every time I touch the star, my score increases. Okay. Perfect. Next step has us go to level up. All right, this is where it starts getting a little bit trickier, but it's not too hard. Okay, it's gonna have us add a second backdrop. It give you, gives you the example of Nebula, so I'm actually gonna go add that one. We're gonna be writing new code on our robot. It's gonna say to switch backdrop to Galaxy, meaning when I start my game, I always want it to start on that Galaxy backdrop. Then it says wait until our score equals 10. 
So when I touch that star 10 times and I get 10 points, I get to level up to the next level and I'm gonna switch my backdrop to Nebula. So let's go search for that backdrop first. Down here, I'm gonna search, type in Nebula, click it, okay. So now I automatically switch my backdrop, but I don't want it to start at that. So I need to make sure I code it to always start at the galaxy backdrop. So when my flag is clicked, I'm gonna to go to my looks. I'm gonna switch my backdrop to galaxy. Okay, that way I always start when I click that flag, my score will go back to zero and I'll start on that main backdrop. Then it had an operator in there. So we have greater than, less than, and equal to. I want the equal to one. But this is not a block that I can just add onto my code. It fits inside another block. So I'm gonna to go to my controls and click the wait until block. Because I'm waiting until the score equals that. All right, score equals, I'm gonna insert it. This right here, I had a lot of students when we did this in my class, type in score. Nothing is going to happen if you code it like that because you didn't actually use a coding block there, you just type something in and it can't read that. The computer can't read it. So I'm actually gonna drag my variable score block and insert it into it right there. Go back to my blocks. Then I'm gonna switch my backdrop to Nebula. The score is automatically set to 50, so I'm gonna make sure I change it to 10. Now when I click on the flag, I went back to this backdrop and my score reset to zero. So now we gotta test it out, make sure that when the score equals 10, the backdrop actually switches, because if not, that means I did something wrong. Perfect, okay, it did exactly what I wanted. So the backdrop switched, let's go back to our chase cards. It says to add a victory message. So, oh, it also says to add a sound when you switch backdrops, okay, very easy. I'm gonna actually let you go through the rest of this. I'm gonna show you what the game looks like when you're done, okay. So on here, here's my code for my robot. Okay, it's gonna have a switch backdrops five times because your goal should be to see if you can get five levels. The cards actually only have you make two, but it's way more fun to add as many as you want. So I have when my score equals five, and then 10, and then 15, and then 20. Okay, I have a star that I coded. It's just gliding around. I wrote level up. So there's gonna be a level up every time I switch levels, okay? When I want to switch levels, I have the sprite character that's labeled level up because you can create sprite characters. You can make your own and type in words. I have it hiding when I start the game. And then when my backdrop switches, it shows for two seconds and then it hides again. And then I actually added a starfish at well as well that takes away points for me. The cards don't have you do that. I just added it for fun. So I'm going to show you what this game looks like. So all I'm gonna do is unhook this code so that nothing happens with that starfish. Okay. Okay, there you go, that's all I wanted to show you. So it says I leveled up, I had a sound play, and my backdrop changed. All right, so your goal with the practice game, you can add this to make it harder, makes it more fun, should be to create five levels Okay, have something change at every single level, and then at the very end, you can have your own victory message if you want. Now, the other thing, after you do the practice game, you should try and create your own video game. So I'll insert a quick little clip of what my students created to make their own video game. So we did a whole four week project with this and a lot of them designed their own video games with groups and they were so cool. So this is where you get to add in your own backdrop, your own characters, you can make your own characters and you can code it to be whatever you want. So I'll insert an example really quick of what some of my students did.